Sometimes it's hard to describe yourself because you always look at the good side of yourself. But like I think our artworks are like our portraits. So through our challenges, things we've gone through, because I majored in sculpture, but strangely I've been living and surviving as an art, as a painter. I've been mainly experimenting with different materials. In most cases, like trying to find who I am, even like as a person, even what am I capable of as a person. Not to be limited, but by what I was taught. So that means knowledge can be added on. Even today, you have to upgrade your software. You have to. <laughs> Everything is upgraded. So I do, because if you say, talk about creativity, when you have, say, like, stick to a style, to me that means almost you've stopped thinking, you've stopped uh, inventing. So you're in your comfort zone. In most cases, the way I work is uh, I like working with surfaces uh, or textures, some I would call it. Um, so this would be like a primer to me. Uh, but uh, as you're priming, you're also trying to create in the process so that like, you don't have like a, a specific theme in mind, but you create as you're working. And I prefer it that because you end up uh, not being limited to just an idea you have, but uh, just as I work as, uh, just create as I'm working. It's like a conversation between the artist and the painting. I like staying with my work for a long time. So if I put a work and I still don't feel like adding something, that some works after like months, I change everything. Or like sometimes you're stuck, I put it aside for about four months, then as you're experimenting on other things, then you find solution to the other painting. It's like a communication between you and the painting. So you have your language, because you know when you make a mistake, the painting shows you you've made a mistake. So when you've done a successful stroke or anything, you see it. So I think as artists, one is, has to be more critical than other people. So that's why also, also I like, I've never feared criticism, but like also I like someone to criticize me when you know what you're talking about. We have experiments that fail, some work, some what. To me, a work that is still here in my studio is work in progress. Anytime I can add a stroke, change the color, even cut it, even burn it. Most of my works are lonely figures. Yeah? I think we're more free alone, which I think is more natural. In groupings, I started doing such, but there's too much pretense. In your lonely space, uh, I think that's the one you are most free. I think naturally I don't like following rules. Because uh, if it's in a relationship, you're supposed to do this according to a tradition, you're supposed to. <laughs> there are no traditions when you're alone. You create your own, because things that make sense to you. Because you can't hurt yourself. Really. The series of works I've done in the last almost one and eight months, because I started doing works, so I think it's going, the flu is going away. So that series I started doing, because I wanted this body of works to be shown before the pandemic ends. I thought it would make more sense. Of course, it's too risky, you know, and because of course your works will put prices to them, but at least I wanted people to see it. Solo shows are becoming, uh, I don't know, the artists have no works or are not interested, or because of social media, I'm a conservative artist, I think, because there are things I'm liberal about, things I'm conservative about. I remember I promised myself I would do a solo every year for the next 20 years. And the next 20 years I would have 21. So even if I stopped, I know like I've fulfilled my dream. So to me, it's like an account of the year. So it's more of like a summary of, cause each stroke 
almost as a memory or like of time and thought. It's a recorded year in a way. So they're trying to prepare for the works for the exhibition, so try to wipe up some works, then arrange them. Um, just waiting for the truck guys so that we load them and take them. Uh, so well, I still have too much dust, so sometimes at the last minute you come and clean up some of the works. So I also arrange them in sizes um, so that when I'm loading also it helps so that because when you're transporting also you can damage the works. My thought was the right time because my pe people were saying, will people come? I said, I like taking the risks because I've always had shows in January, which is the most risk month. I like to take, because I think I'll survive that way, you know, taking risks and see. Next year I'll be celebrating 20 years as an artist. So 19 years and still people come. Maybe there's something, I don't know, they're interesting, they want to see. Um, that's um, encouraging to continue, maybe. Ronix is always Ronix with uh, female figures, but I think he, it's a, there's a lot of technique and experimenting and trying out different ideas. There's some pieces I've seen, I think they are um, a mix of printing and then painting. Yeah, his work is really good, it's mature. It makes you wonder what he passed through to reach this kind of level. Ronix is a very diverse artist and uh, obviously he has different types, uh, different techniques and styles. He's mixed the sculpture and the paintings and the collage and I feel like maybe the lockdown has also allowed him to experiment more with his style and technique. It's a beautiful style. It's really, I'm looking forward to seeing it beyond just the COVID element. Um, I feel like I've seen the style before, I've interacted with this style, but I like how it has been brought up in this exhibition. So I really feel like the exhibition is to bring us together uh, and remind us that much as everything is going wrong, this intimacy, this coming back, this seeing, this being able to see each other is a privilege. Mm -hmm.